The next section in Brain Rules is exploration. Medina says that this is the greatest brain rule of them all. Totally agree because this is how we survived. I love the quote at the end when when the Savannah, no one gave us a textbook on how to survive in the Savannah. We had to do it. We had to survive. We had to learn under kind of chaos, which is kind of funny because we, we always try to say keep the chaos out, but we're pretty good at dealing with chaos and putting that because there's no right way. How do we survive? You learn ways not to do it and the way to do it. You know, so much learning is going on. But uh, the quote that he says in here is, I think we must do a better job of encouraging lifelong curiosity in our workplaces, our homes, especially in our schools. 100% degree. The question is, what strategies do you use in the classroom to tap into this natural tendency to explore. Moving forward, how would you like to further engage your students in exploration? We've talked about this in other chapters, is you have to make the content relevant for the individual. We are selfish. We want to learn about stuff that will increase, that will make our life better. I mean, without a doubt. I mean, that's how we are. So again, you have to let them get the content and how does this fit into their life. Uh, I've been a math teacher. I teach video. I teach business right now. So I think of, you know, business and video uh, is a little bit easier because you teach them the content and you let them go on YouTube, explore, go, this can go any way. This is just the core idea. Uh, someone said this is, you know, you're teaching them how to drive a vehicle. At any time, they can change the vehicle anytime they want. But again, when you learn how to drive a vehicle, it's those core concepts. And then we can just translate it to other vehicles. I thought that was amazing. And I think that applies uh, to this right here. And the next thing, I think the content uh, is like the rock that you throw in a bottle of water and we have to let it ripple. So again, we have to let students be able to explore and again, fit this into their life. So yeah, that means in a classroom of 30, I would bet you're going to get 26 different ways of how this can be applied and probably even 30, to be honest, of it, which it could be a lot. But again, you're going to have that buy-in. And then the last part says, further engage students in exploration with going, this is the status quo where you're finding. How can we improve on that? Let them imagine. Let them, like I said, explore. Be creative. Come up with things that might not be around but that's the whole point of human society is pushing those boundaries yeah we might not know exactly how to do it but if we have that concept we can bridge that distance that gap uh between what is now and what the future holds so like i said is letting students be creative how does this work in their world and letting them own that content because if they own that content and it can bring value to their life they're gonna go so giving that control of how does this look in the classroom? How does it look for a student? That's the biggest thing uh, that I can see. And I really, truly agree that we can never stop learning uh, because human society would just stop us. And I, I think with all the tools that we have, it's even easier to continue to be curious and push those boundaries in our technology, technological age. So...